What is up guys, don't forget to subscribe, check out my channel playlist for individual tutorials on logic, sculpting, animation, music, and more. Check out my puppet interface tutorial, how to make characters in Dreams PS4, and soon how to make characters out of remixable parts of characters where you could just look up a piece and put everything together. So if all that excites you, just go to my channel playlist or look it up with the name Young text let's go ahead and begin with this check out my game linger on the dreamverse this is my game polybius this is a map within the game let's go ahead and edit this up and show you guys how to do this so what you'd want to do is press l1 and x maybe and then press l1 and square you might just be able to press l1 and square down here you have your default um animations you can click these to quickly edit them that's not what we're here for today just extra information for you what you want to do is turn these off and you can mess around with turning off the procedural walk and animations you may also need to turn off auto look you shouldn't have to turn off auto jump but you can turn that off too because you might also be wanting to know ways of how to turn off all the other uh, animations if you're wanting to know this it actually tells you that a lot of the times if you hover above this a lot of people animating will turn this stuff off and just connect it to the, either the puppet interface, their animations to the puppet interface, or to the control sensor's movement. So whenever you move with the left stick, that animation would start, and then it would be connected to the walk of the puppet interface. So let's go ahead and assume that that didn't do it for you. You already know about that. Well, if you open up your puppet microchip by pressing L1 and X on it, once you can see it, you could see all the default animations for a puppet. One of them is follower behavior. What you wanna do is either delete it with triangle or open it up and just turn it off. And that should essentially make your puppet stop following now i'm going to explain why it's following so over here we can see what everything is attached to this is the follower behavior microchip this is already opened up already opened it up in a previous session right here we have the possessed this connects to the possessed of the control sensor what that means is that whenever this is either possessed or not possessed depending on what because all the control sensors could just work together so if one control sensor knows that you possessed a puppet then it tells every other control sensor that um when it senses something's possessed it has a not gate here so it's able to sense when something is possessed and it's put into the input port with the animation icon the not gate reverses the signal and it says not possessed. So that's what it's doing. It says when something is not possessed, turn on follower. So if we click on that right there and then L1 and square over this, we can see what it does. As you can see, it turns everything on here. So if I was to press circle, everything would turn off like I had it. But because the not gate saying it doesn't have to be possessed, it's pretty much opposite day. It's saying turn it on whenever this puppet is not possessed, essentially, and do all this other stuff. Turn off auto jump, etc. Look at me is the tag that's given to the possessed creature. So if your main character is possessed, it's instantly got the look at me tag, essentially, along with the radiuses. You can also just turn down the radiuses. You can try that also. These are essentially the ways that you turn off the follower. <clears throat> and this is how you turn off the follower, the ways to do it. You can also use a keyframe to turn it off, essentially, also. So I hope that helps. Here's your puppet interface. So this is called Jump Ascent. If you go over here, you can see that pretty much that's what the quick edits are. So whenever you're quick editing, you're actually editing that. And that's connected to the Jump Ascent. So a keyframe should just have to be connected to the right ports that are the names down here that are within your puppet microchip in order to do that. That's pretty much should be how that works. 
um don't forget to subscribe i'm gonna go ahead and play my game polybius where i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what polybius is like and pretty much just look me up i'm young text youtube on the dreamverse uh, following me there for more games and subscribe to me here for more content. I actually made this video beforehand, but none of the audio actually came out, so I have to make this again. I'm probably not going to be as energetic the second time around, sadly. It was a really good video, actually. Um, I was kind of disheartened by that. So I'll try to be as informative as I possibly can. So if you don't know what Polybius is... It's a game with a lot of lore behind it. It's a game that pretty much took arcade cabinets and said, or well, it's a story that and said that the CIA created the arcade cabinets, right? And well, a arcade cabinet named Polybius and sent it to um, the arcade uh, stores or whatever they're called, the arcade places. And it was either the, C, uh, the the government did it or it was somebody else who randomly did it. And then the CIA or whatever had to confiscate them. However, the Polybius game, people made games of it. It was never really a real game. The games that people display are pretty much, you know, games that would just be out of the 1981s. They would never look like this. This is the actual story behind it and why the story of Polybius was created in the first place. That's what my game is. That's what my game is. I wanted to do something a little bit different because everybody else was pretty much essentially making the game, same game out of it. I wanted to expand upon it, make it a story, make it scary, make it have a lot of fun stuff that I enjoy. I didn't want it to also be another FPS because with the way Dreams is built, you really need to be exciting all the time. Um, because you're essentially competing with everybody else. You're competing with all the other Dreamers, essentially. And you're wanting to have the knowledge of how you should make a game inside of that market, inside of this untapped market. Unreal, all those other things are a tapped market. That's a tapped market. It's already done over with. It's hard to get in that game. So this is an untapped market essentially. Within this game, I also want to talk about like the scene that I see showed you guys in the begin uh, in the beginning of the video. That's actually after the scene that comes after this scene. It's essentially going to be a metaphor to how hard it is to become a game developer. And that's what that's going to be about. Because there's parts in this game that pretty much show that there's a game developer in the process of developing Polybius. And within the notes, you, he, he, he asks questions, have, what, what would it be like if a killer made a game? And that's going to lead on to how hard it is to develop a game. Which is going to lead on to why the person developed, um, well, he, he essentially sells his, um, his, his, um, his soul to a, to a something, I don't know. And it's just the struggles of game development on that part. And here we have a cliffhanger. I really like that. I'm going to add more documents or I might expand upon that one document. I think I'm going to do that. So this is, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a cold. This is essentially where the game effectively starts, where you will be getting used to the controls, where you will be getting used to my gameplay mechanics. I really took from Smash Brothers because I could see myself playing Smash Bros in an arcade. That's what it always feels like to me whenever I play Smash Bros for some reason. It doesn't feel like I'm playing a fighting game like Mortal Kombat. I don't know why. I have no idea why. Essentially, I'm taking a lot from mobile games. Because mobile games can get really addicting. They're not the best games in the world. The thing that I don't like about mobile games is because they, they don't have heart. So this is trying to make a mobile game have heart. That's what Polybius is trying to do as a game. So 
so right here this isn't too hard it's your first challenge in the game it's actually really easy the AI isn't even gonna follow you everywhere you can effectively destroy it by uh, just leaning low and then shooting it at the right time however whenever you get uh whenever you hurt it enough instead of the enemy dying you have to edit the footage at the right time so if you don't press that in time he'll get back up and he'll start fighting and you'd have to start all over so you get to edit footage in this game the thing about polybius is people were seeing things in the documented notes so i am taking from polybius whenever i in making this game people were seeing things and that's why the vhs tape is here to kind of um give you the feeling of what it'd be like if you were seeing things and that's how we're taking from polybius that's how we're um effectively doing a lot of the stuff here within my polybius game Pretty scary stuff. There's even sounds whenever they're invisible, like monstrous sounds. If you uh, have the tape on, that it doesn't you, you won't hear it, but you might hear it all uh, here. So if you would have came into this room with the tape without killing that enemy, that would have just popped up, and you would be able to see the enemy, but he wouldn't move. But since we killed that first thing over there, we've effectively completed a challenge. And you know, as games go. Here we are. So this is the first boss in the game. I really wanted to make this AI smarter than the other AI, not harder. It's not hard. The game will progressively get harder as the hide and seek aspects of the game get implemented inside of the game. This is to get people used to what it can actually do within the game, what kind of things can happen, and how you can actually see different sites you can do. Because uh, if you hurt this enemy enough, it actually is pretty dynamic and interesting with the vision is for the way I have it set up here. Are. Here we are. So, what you can take from my my creation is what you should apply to your creation. Make it as interesting as you can, as fast as you can. And the way that I'm doing that, the thing that I'm taking from Cellphone Games is essentially making unlockables and other interesting type types of mechanics. As you can see here, one of the mechanics is the um, VHS being able to see. And you won't always be able to see what the edit footage is, which adds to replayability. People might want to actually go back and actually see that. Sometimes you won't be able to see it unless you uh, are risk restarting the tape, which I think is actually really cool. But then we also have unlockables like uh, the lives mechanic that's actually added into the game, which helps the actual story in itself, because I want the player to be confused on whether they're actually inside of a simulation or if they are actually abducted by something or something actually took them. That's one of the things that I want to grasp upon. So as you can see with the story, there's already a lot going on within the first 10 minutes. Within the first 10 minutes, you're essentially left in wonder what is actually going on in Polybius. What is this game? What the heck is this game? There's going to be other unlockables such as special effects for your tape, um, 
do it the other way. I don't know exactly what it's gonna be, but just to say one of the things on the top of the head, you'll uh, fireball, maybe, maybe something like that, or it might be something completely different. I really wanted to match the feel of the game, but I also want it to be fun, if that makes sense. Which is why it might be something more scary, if the, that's the best term, but right now, special effects, I'm thinking of like fireballs and stuff. But it might end up being something completely different. Um, I really want to add more areas. Like, not with this zone right here. I feel like this is long. I consider this long. Like, how much time we spent on this one. Um, and here we are. You might want to go back and see that footage. But you didn't get to see it. So that's one of the cool things about the replayability. You might not, you might want to see, you know, all the found footage that you can find. But with the discoverability of the game, discoverability makes games feel bigger. And right here, I actually, I didn't even notice you could actually see it from that far away. I might change that. But, um,. Essentially, I added that jump scare there just to remind people it's a scary game because I don't know how if, if that boss was actually scary or not. I, I mean, I imagine it it can be, but it's more fun if that makes sense. I'm really going for the more fun, but I don't want to like get rid of the of what I'm trying to let it be. Pretty much, essentially, a scary mobile game with heart and story. Essentially, that's what I want this to be. So right there, we're back at the room where we started the follower tutorial. And here's our hide and seek mechanics. That thing, is, you're not gonna be able to beat it. It's gonna actually have a warning whenever I get the animations done, cause you're, you're gonna like go up to the mirror and it's gonna like get up and look at the mirror really creepy like, and then it's gonna walk out of the mirror like the ring, if that makes sense. And then you're gonna have to hide before it does that, like this. So we have our outlast mechanics I have that done and essentially you gotta hide and seek from this thing um, it wouldn't matter if you I mean you could shoot it but it's not um, the tapes gonna be like warning can't edit footage it's gonna, it's gonna be really cool like, I really like um, the ideas I'm coming up for this There's going to be like basements and stuff. And essentially, it's going to be more of the puzzle aspect of the game. Finding the right keys and stuff like that. With this one enemy. This one enemy that's uh, going to be hunting you down like Nemesis. So don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Dreamverse. I'm Young Tech's YouTube. Check out my channel playlist for individual tutorials. If there was a video name that popped up at the top, click those. I made those. It would have just came up at the top of there. Um, and there might be videos at the end here you can click on also. My channel playlist is right down there next to the subscribe button. Click on that. And then go to playlist on my channel. Then you can find individual tutorials. We've got like probably 200 of these things now. And you can learn quick and learn quick dreams. Uh, how I have it to where videos lead to other videos that you would need to know. Uh, one of the most important videos is probably my fighting game tutorial how to make fighting games, Dreams PS4, how to make fighting games, or how to make a fighting game. Um, stuff like that. I might have that at the end of this video. That's a very important video. So, um, here we are, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, Puppet Interface Tutorial, you can check that out also. And I hope this teaches you how to stop things from following like this thing is doing right now. Oh my gosh! Peace out, guys. Hope you enjoyed the information on my game, Polybius.